today I'm testing out Fusion for the very first time and I'm excited to try it. I'm going to test it out on this vinyl seat here. Now I probably should wipe that lid because it will get stuck. So I'll be right back. Always give the lid a wipe so that you can get the top off again. So I've been told that this goes quite a long way, so I've only poured out just a little here. I'm going to be using my zebra brush here. Let's just put it right on. I think with some of these lighter colors, you are going to need to do two coats. I am liking the coverage here. Now, I do have this on some little feet here so that I can turn it. Probably turn it this way towards me. I'm just going to make sure that I get into all the nooks and crannies here. Since it's up on these little feet, I'm able to get right to the bottom. Now I can see it is going to need at least two coats because it is a lighter color. Now I will be going over this with a stencil. Well, not exactly a stencil. I'll be taping on a pattern. So I'm not going to be too fussed with getting the coverage perfect. Okay, I've got every drop out of here. I'm going to go clean the brush. I made myself a template for the stripes and this is one that I'm actually going to be using for a rounded chair, but I just bent it back so that I could see the lines here and I just lightly made some pencil marks where I want to run my tape. So because this has only been drying for about 12 hours and it's still fairly fresh, I'm going to be using frog tape and this is on freshly painted surfaces. It's specifically for that use. So we're going to give this a try and hopefully it's not going to lift the paint. So you just pop it from the side here where that tab is, open it and it's fairly tight. So let's just run our first piece and then make sure you have enough over, um, to go over the edges here. So I'm just going to line up my first two. And just run it down the side. And the same with here. And then burnish it down. Same with this one. I'm just going to line up my markings. And I've got the seat on these bumpers here so that it's a little lifted from the edge so I can go right under with the tape. So there's my first line down the center and I'm going to do the same thing side to side. Okay, if for any reason your tape isn't looking like it's squared up, and here it seems that I'm a little off, I'm definitely off. I don't know what happened there. So, you know what, guys, I'm just going to eyeball it. 
going to get it straight to my eye. That looks better. And then, yep, that's right on. Now, in the center here, we're going to cut this out in just a moment. Here and here. So what I'm going to do is just lift it. I've got these little curved scissors. So I'm going to just give that a cut through the middle here just to release it. And then I can come back and neaten up here. And then I'll just come back and cut that. Holding it back on itself gives you a line. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the middle here. Do the same thing, fold it back. And then we'll cut that right off. Now you've got the line running under here, so you can cut this slightly back. so that you get a nice neat edge with the tape that's underneath. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut these last two out and then we'll be back to do our side to side. I've got my first piece of diagonal tape down and now I'm going for the second one. And I've just brought the marks across on the tape here where the angles are and that will help me guide my piece of tape also because um, when you only have marks on either side, it's a little difficult to line it up exactly. So, I'm gonna make sure I'm on those marks. Because this is light, if you do make a mistake, if you do need to rearrange where you've put things down, you can just temporarily lift it and put it back down. And then make sure that you're burnishing really well. Now again, we're gonna take away the tape that's in the middle here because we're painting red through this cross. So I'm gonna use my same trick with the scissors here and I'm just going to cut that away. Now here you don't have to be too precise. You're just going to be cutting over the tape that's already laid because you've got this underneath. So just lift it up and get under there. snip it away. Same with here. Just cut it back. Because all you need are these diagonal pieces and not what's in the middle. got my top vertical lines on here and I'm just going to take the scissors and cut it back so that there's nothing in the middle here. So just go ahead and cut that. Expose the middle. Peel that right back and I'm going to take it down to here and then cut it here. You want to keep that middle area free and clear. And again, I'm going to come down here and do the same thing. So, just get under there with 
your curved scissors. Just come along, lift what's in the middle, make sure this is burnished down well, and just peel it right back. And again, cut it off. Now you've got the middle exposed. So you just want to be sure with every step that you're burnishing really well because this is a lighter tack and I'm just afraid it's going to bleed underneath because of the texture we still have on this vinyl. So really, really burnish the edges. That's what you really need to be mindful of. So do take the time to do that. Now the last step is um, I am going to double up some of these lines to make it thicker. So if you look at my schematic here, you'll see that this thick line on the opposite side runs into a thinner line. So some of these lines we're going to double up, but we're going to do it opposite. So if you want to get it more accurate, just going to take my ruler and the width of this is an inch. So if I just take a ruler here, I'm just going to lightly pencil over the tape itself. It's kind of difficult to see because the tape is yellow too. So I've got half an inch here. So that's going to be my overlap. So I'm going to take the tape put it on the edge where my half inch is. And then lay it down. So that makes this line extra thick. And we'll get the edges in a moment. Again, be sure to burnish. Now on this side, I'm going to be laying the tape on the opposite. So here I taped it on the bottom edge. Here I'm going to be taking, taping along the top edge. So I'll just mark my half inch. And then I'm going to run the edge of the tape right along there. Actually, let's do it this way. Now as you can see, I've got my exposed line here and here, and they're opposing. So I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom. I do have a little bit of a tip right there coming into my center area, so I'm just going to cut that back. Now guys, this isn't sticking overly well, so I am a little concerned that this is not going to do the trick for this application, but this is just a tester. Um, my actual seat is going to be round, and this is just testing the waters. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this last corner here, put the last piece of tape, and we're going to be ready to paint. My taping is now done, and I'm going to take some time to burnish the edges, just Make sure it's secure, you can run your nail along it. And I am still concerned that this isn't going to be up to the task, so I think that's how it looks. Now, very important with this yellow frog tape is to put it back in the container and then put the lid back on to keep the air out because if the air gets to it, it will no longer work. So, be sure you do that right away and seal it back up. 
tight, tight, tight. I'll get rid of those. I'm gonna continue burnishing, and when we're back, we're gonna be painting. As much as I burnish the tape, I can see that it's still lifting in areas. It's not really sticking that well. So I have a feeling it's going to end up bleeding. Um, I don't know, it's, it's uh, a dilemma here because I don't want it to be so sticky that it lifts my base tape, but I don't want bleed either. So I have put down, I substituted out one piece of green tape just to see if it's gonna lift my undercoat and if it's gonna be any better at preventing bleeding. So anyways, I'm just gonna go for it. I think what I'm gonna do is like come onto it this way to try to avoid coming under the edges. Now, I am noticing a lot of brush strokes here and Fusion does make a product that gives you a longer open time so that it helps minimize that. So I think the trick here is going to be just to come in from the edges and then definitely do two coats. We're supposed to be doing red here too, so let's just give this a coat. For the next color, I'm going to test out using a sponge brush, and this is just a cheap one in the dollar store, just to see if it's any better with respect to the brush strokes. And I know you can't see this on camera, but it is looking much better than my red did. So I think for the remainder, of this, when I do my second coat of red, I'm going to switch over to the sponge brush. Let's just see how this looks in the end. We'll compare. I'm still getting a lot of lifting on this yellow tape, so I have a feeling it was a mistake to use this low tack stuff, even though it says it's for fresh paint. I wonder what they consider fresh though. I did let it sit for 13 hours overnight, so anyways, when we peel the green tape, we'll see if it makes any difference. I think ideally, when you're doing something like this, it's probably a good idea to try to find some kind of a turntable to put it on, because then you can turn it and you can actually get your sides without having to contort or walk around your table. It's looking like the gray is gonna get much better coverage than the red. And I think that's very typical with red paints because of the base. It takes many more coats of red for, to get coverage than it does with some of these darker colors. And you'll find that with colors like yellow too, any of the brights. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. So I'm just continuing with the gray here. Now everywhere you see the yellow tape is gonna remain the background color. So you'll be getting the stripe effect under the tape when you peel it back and hopefully we won't get too much bleed through. If we do, we're gonna be touching it up. So here for instance, I'm not getting, not getting it sticking there. edges like this, it's best just to keep it dry. Don't glob on the paint, because then for sure it will seep under. So it's been about 45 minutes now, and I'm ready to do the second coat of red. And I am gonna try a brush, or a foam brush this time. I don't know if the camera is picking this up, but it is going on fairly smooth now. And the second coat definitely does look a lot better. Let 
Let's just get around to the front here. Get a little more paint. Now I don't know yet, but it might even need three coats. But we'll see. Now this time I'm not bothering to come in from the sides because I'm hoping that my first coat of paint sealed the edges. But again, it's all going to be a big surprise once we peel this up. So the best thing to do is just to take long strokes so that there are no stops and starts. Now because this is much thinner, I think I'm going to switch my brush over to this thinner one here. It's not as wide. This goes fairly fast. It really takes no time at all to get this done. And again, just take some long strokes there to finish that off. It's a little tricky to get over the sides here when you can't quite see. Again, this would be a great project to have on a turntable so that you can turn it and see all your edges as you're painting. I'm pretty sure I have a turntable somewhere. So that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to wash out these two brushes and I'll be back to complete another coat of the gray. The gray does look a lot better than the red did after just one initial coat, but I think two will really Vanessa. So it's time for another coat of gray and I was able to just cover this up and come back to it. It didn't dry up on me thankfully. So just lay it down smoothly and be sure to take long strokes. Be sure to get your edges. So I'm just going to go back over and just lay it down smooth. I'm just going to go back over and smooth out any lines that I see. And I think because this vinyl is textured, I'm getting a much better finish with this foam brush than I was with the bristle brush. Even though I'm using, or I was using, an excellent brand, it's using a zebra brush. Um, I think depending on the texture of the vinyl, and as I mentioned, you can get an additive from Fusion so that you do have a much longer open time and you can go back over and smooth your brush strokes out. And even with a brush, I was probably being just a little bit too impatient with it. It's better to lay it down so that your bristles are this way on the side. You don't want to drag because then you will definitely see your brush strokes. Okay, and with that, I think I'm done. I'm just gonna eyeball around the edges. Make sure I've got decent coverage everywhere. So if I do need any touch-ups, I do have a little bit of paint there. I'm gonna cover it just in case. You might not see everything right off the bat. I've decided that the red doesn't need any more than two coats, so I'm gonna peel it back and reveal it. And let's see how it looks. 
Now when you're peeling back it's good to sort of try to come at 45 degrees. I find that it reduces any possible tear out. Now this paint is still a little wet. I didn't want it to dry, so just be mindful of that. So far so good. There's really not too much paint bleed, if any. I am getting some paint bleed here on the red. This side is looking much, much better. It's much more crisp. The verdict on the yellow tape is I think that I would potentially wait longer for my paint to dry and use the Frog Tape Green product. It does tend to stick a lot better, even after burnishing. I don't know if it's because of the paint. Um, hard to say why it wasn't sticking that well, even after burnishing. But it's not pulling up my yellow, that's for sure. This is just a practice run for the chair that I'm actually doing. So I'm not going to be so overly fussed with a little bit of paint bleed. Okay, and I don't know if you can see it, but there is a blob of paint there. I'll have to either see if I can maybe sand that or touch that up with some yellow. But overall, not a bad look. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to let that dry overnight and then we'll put it back together. Before we finish up this sewing stool, I just want to show you my next project. And unlike this one where I brushed on the Fusion, this was sprayed on with a spray gun and it's absolutely flawless and looks gorgeous. I know that the camera won't be able to pick that up, but the coverage is incredible and it looks beautiful. It looks like the, the vinyl was always a cream color. So that's gonna be my next project, but that's for another day. Just wanted to show you that and um, hope that you'll tune in for that one too.